Oh viewers, because I'm in the area driving a couple of MT6s today, I decided to have a go in this 2022 Renault Capture 1.6 E-Tech Hybrid Reeve Gauche Edition. Welcome to Contingency Reviews. So as you know viewers, we uh, do contingency reviews when uh, we get off a little tasty something whilst we're uh, in the area doing other things and uh, we can't say no. This Renault Capture is owned by uh, some friends of mine who actually have already had a car on the channel because um, many, many years ago, the area that I'm in, just on the western edge of Epsom, was where uh, we used to live and also where the channel started really and uh, a bit later on we'll be heading over to uh, have a look at the car um, in a bit more detail in terms of the interior and exterior but uh, yes a friend Amanda's now changed her Peugeot 207 which was probably one of the worst cars we've ever had on the channel to be honest um, for this Renault Capture. The Capture came out um, in 2013 and this is the second generation car which was launched right at the end of 2019. I think the uh, press cars for the Mark II launch were registered in December 2019. So the uh, full range of engines available in the second generation capture start with a one litre three cylinder engine developing 89 horsepower. That launch run engine wasn't available. The next one up is a three cylinder turbocharged one litre again with 99 horsepower. Those two engines are very familiar to anyone who's driven, say, uh, like a Clio or uh, Duchess Sandero since those two new models came out in 2021. In fact, the uh, Sandero that I drove, the Sandero Stepway, I should say, um, in September 2021 had that one litre engine. Above that, there are three uh, 1.3 engines available with either 128, 138, or 152 horsepower. Don't know why you need the uh, 128 and 138, but never mind. The 152 horsepower version only comes as standard with a um, automatic gearbox. You can get the uh, 128 and 148, sorry, sorry 138 brake horsepower models with a manual as well. Let we get to this particular car. Uh, it's a 1.6 litre engine with uh, 142 horsepower, not to 60, it's about 10 seconds or so. And then right at the top of the range is the plug-in hybrid version, the most expensive capture in the range, and that generates 157 horsepower. Of course, that's not available manual either. There are also some uh, diesels available until this uh, E-Tech hybrid version came out. But as usual, due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of other reasons, oh, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. Actually, when this um, E-Tech hybrid version came out, um, in this case developing 142 horsepower, the diesels were removed from sale. So uh, thank you Renault for listening to uh, what I've been saying all this time. Got different driving modes in, uh, in this car. Um, there's actually a physical selector for them here. Uh, we can have my sense, which is what's in at the moment. It's uh, a customizable mode. You also have it in sport. Does that make any difference? I mean, it goes a bit red. Uh, the, the gearbox has clearly changed ratio and the steering's got a bit firmer, but I don't think the average 
buy a Reverno Capture is really going to be using too much of a sport mode. I think we're more likely to use the uh, eco mode, which is just uh, oh, when it goes green and it gives me, especially in this B mode, you, you could put the car into um, sort of re reach and braking mode with using B, uh, a bit like an old Toyota Prius. It's now lit, lit up the uh, display in green, and I, c I can feel the regen braking is far more severe. I'm obviously going to use a lot less fuel this way. Because this is the uh, Reef Gauche Special Edition, a lot of the things you'd expect of a car to be silver or chromed are actually black uh, such as the black badge and black mirror caps and black wheels it's not necessarily to my taste I think I prefer uh, the sort of more standard looking um, Renault Capture to this and I apologise in advance for getting mud on this car because it's just clean before I picked it up and it's a really muddy day here in Epsom um, yeah, I'm afraid that's just the way that it goes. I did apologise in advance to Nigel and Lamando who owned this car before, before I came out and uh, just as well that I did. So um, one of the main things that's been present with the capture for the past uh, 10 years, the car came out originally in 2013, is uh, the fact you can slide the seats back and forth. Now because this is the um, E-Tech hybrid, not a plug-in hybrid, the E-Tech hybrid, you get a little bit less in the way of boot space than the standard capture would do but with the seats in this position and uh, the driver's seat set up for me let's see how much room we've actually got let's try not to get too much mud in here that's actually very good um, that's very impressive we've got two USB ports down here and a 12 volt socket as well gosh it's all your infotainment needs does that armrest have a cup holder back no it doesn't Vents down there, um, little uh, map pockets, don't look too bad. One thing you don't get, and if you bear in mind this car when it was new cost £28,000, you don't get a rear armrest. So be, um, that is a bit of a shame. You do get privacy glass, you can sort of see how the, the back windows are quite heavily tinted in this car. I'd say you definitely need a reversing camera in here. Um, the rear visibility is not great, but that's the same with a lot of cars like this. The trim is good. I don't know whether this is real leather or Artico leather. I suspect these days that's Artico leather. The um, headrests are weird, aren't they? But I think it's um, due to the fact that you get better visibility for the rear passengers if you have the uh, headrests or head restraint. I should say, actually, I don't get told off if I don't call them head restraints. If you have them like this, then it does have better visibility for people in the back. Uh, it's not particularly exciting on the door cards. In fact, it all looks like it's the same material, isn't it? I mean, that is soft touch, but it's... Yeah, it's hard, just like most of the other cars like this are. You bear in mind, this car is based on the Clio, so you can't expect it to be absolutely luxury, can you? See where the, the, the handle is for adjusting the seat. So, there we go, look, we can go forward. We can go forward again, and now I've got virtually no lee room, but we can go back. Let's put it back there. That's quite handy, isn't it? Obviously, you've got to take everyone else with you when you do that. Have I snagged the seatbelts? Oh, no, I haven't, actually. That's quite handy, isn't it? It's quite well thought out, this car. Right, let's have a look in the boot. So you'd think that might be the boot badge. That's not, but it's reversing camera. It opens like this. Now, the sill is, is quite high. Um, there's a boot liner in here, which is probably not a bad idea, to be honest. There's also a dustable boot floor. We've got things actually underneath the floor in here. Because this is the um, E-Tech Hybrid, it's not got as much space. The standard car has over 400 litres of space. This has only got about 322. The plug-in hybrid's even worse. It's um, under 300 litres. I think it's like 276 or something. Bear in mind, though, that all these figures are when the seats are in the back position. You can, you can move them forward to create some more space if you want. There's not a lot else really going on in here though. There's um, just a normal boot like with an incandescent bulb in it. A couple of 
hooks for bags and that's about it really I imagine the car doesn't even come with a, a, a spare anymore I wouldn't see why it would because most of the cars don't but uh, there we go got handles either side there for shutting it which is, which is handy it's not particularly heavy or anything and yes, so you've got E-Tech Hybrid. Strangely enough, although this is a special edition, you don't get any um, indication that it is. It doesn't say Reef Gulch on here or anything. So if you open the car up, I've got the key in my pocket. So if I wanted to, we could just sort of head off. You don't have to put it anywhere. One thing that's really weird about this car, I've tried to put the seat as back, far back as I can, and... It initially doesn't do it, but it is, does now. Um, must have been doing it wrong or something. But there's loads of places to put stuff. These controls look very familiar to, to Renault Arcana, cause, probably because they're exactly the same. Because underneath, these cars are the same, and the Clio. It's that Renault 11 style um, stalk for changing the source and volume of the con of the radio if you don't want to use the touch screen and I can understand if you wouldn't want to do that because I don't even know where the mind volume control is in this, in this car views. So there we go, the automatic transmission, it's the standard for the E-Tech hybrid, you can't get a manual but that's the same for most hybrids I think. Automatic handbrake down here, auto hold I think that is as well. Um, I had to release it manually so I think the auto holds off at the moment. So I'll just uh, Pull myself forward a little bit because I'm far too back, uh, far too far back now, and uh, we'll continue looking at the infotainment system and the car. Okay, so everything's off, so we'll just turn this on. Right, so we're not going to get anything because uh, it should have Bluetooth phone connection, which we don't. So that's good. It means we don't get any copyright infringement. So first thing we notice is the driving mode selector just there. You can have My Sense Sport and Eco. I'm going to put it back on my sense because that's the way that it was when I picked it up. But if you do go in here, you can edit things. You can have normal steering, you can have the normal powertrain, or you can uh, adjust that. We can have um, three different steering modes, which is which is good. I imagine the comfort steering is far too light for someone like me. If it were me, I'd put it on the sport steering though. Powertrain, presumably we can have that in. Can we even alter that, viewers? It doesn't look like we can. Hmm, that's weird. I mean, we can change the instrument cluster. At the moment, it's on comfort. We can have regular, which is like that, which is the eco mode of sport is... Well, it's not that different, really, is it? There's not a massive amount of difference. Um, just leave it on that one. Eco, I think, looks really similar to regular. I don't know what the difference really is. Answer in the comment section below. So we'll put it back to the way that it was, and then we go in here. The lighting, now apparently you can have all kinds of interesting lighting. At the moment, I can see over there, you can just about see, it's on like a kind of grey colour. So we can go blue, green, red, purple, light blue, yellow, and orange. We'll put it back to the way it was, there we go. You can see I've just been pressing those buttons at the top of there. And we'll uh, we'll go back here as well. And you can even vary the level of ambient lighting. So yeah, we'll leave that the way that it is. Let me go back, press the home button. This is for 9.5 inch display, by the way, viewers. On other models, it's normally a 7 inch display. About the same size as the one that's here. So if you go back to home, what else can we do? Not an awful lot. There's Apple CarPlay, of course, and Android Auto. Hmm, why, why is it all looking so sparse here? Oh, there we go. That's better. So, yeah, navigation. I think this is a TomTom -tom system. You know, TomTom -tom have been using, you, you know, uh, found in Renault cars for years and years. So there we are. If we go back to this bit, there we go. And... Radio, music, applications. What kind of applications can you get with this car? Oh, video and photo, that's nice. But yeah, that's better to go back to this one. Oh, there are volume controls, by the way. Fortunately, Renault haven't done everything within the touchscreen. We've got um, the uh, heating and ventilation here. It's actually on these normal controls. And 
my goodness me, am I thankful for normal controls. You've got heater fan speed there. Just put on that one just so you can see. There's the temperature there. And there is the direction of the air. Nice and simple. Reached window, uh, maximum demist, air conditioning on or off, and then recirculation button. Nice and simple. Aux in there. Now we've actually got an adapter for an iPhone in here from one of the USB ports for the simple reason that, uh, well, um, they're normal USB ports. That's not necessarily a problem. They're not USB C or anything, which I'd find very annoying personally. Aux in there. This particular car seems to have a separate system in here running up there. I think it's for a dash cam. Yeah, it's for a dash cam, that's why that one's running off there. Some cars do have them up there, MTZ has got them up there for, you know, for this example. Put the lights on, it's actually very dark in here. One thing about this car is there is a very dark headlining in here, um, which makes filming a little bit tricky. So if we put those down there, we can have a look and see if the secret mission documents will fit into the glove box. It's actually a, a, a bigger glove box than... Renault's of old, but it's still not going to fit in there. I think we've still got the fuse box on that side viewers, which is why they don't fit. Never mind, we just put them in there. There we go. Um, cup holders, yep. Yeah, all places to put useful stuff. Does this armrest come up? It must do, surely. When it goes forward and back, can I get this open? Hold on a moment, viewers. No, it didn't do anything. Never mind. Right, let's have a look at these controls here. So we're in the uh, sort of standard instrument gauge setting here. So press OK. There we go. We can, can we go up and down through things. Oh, right. Yeah, there's all sorts of things in here we can do. So if I start the car, put it on the brake. Ooh. So that's just put it into normal mode. Right, now, if I go through here, what sort of things will happen? Uh, does that do anything? No. Oh, right, okay, so if these are various sort of modes um, to do with navigation and whatever whatever it is, although it's very bizarre that I can put my seatbelt on to use all of this stuff. How strange. Never mind, we'll just leave it like it is and I'll just turn that off and that waste petrol. So, parking brake on. The um, door card is quite nice, actually. It does feel nice and high quality. Certainly, Renault give this car a five year warranty and it feels better built than a lot of the older Renaults that I've driven. There's the leg keeping assist button, which is handy if you want to turn that on and off. Some people don't like leg keeping assist, I know that. Um, yeah, automatic wipers, automatic lights, and a nice rest for my uh, left foot. That's good. Right, let's conclude this very long-winded look at uh, the inside and outside of the capture by taking a look at the engine. Interesting uh, way the bonnet stay goes in there. We've also got the uh, bright green coolant, which is fascinating, and is all the sort of hybrid battery stuff. So yeah, 1.6 litre engine generating um, 142 horsepower. Gearbox in this car is an F1 inspired gearbox. I think they call it the dog box for some reason. I can't remember why that is. Uh, it's a very bizarre marketing way to sort of associate this car with F1 technology, but there we go. Right, let's go for another drive, shall we, viewers? Lloyd Vehicle Consulting stickers, t-shirts and mugs are available. By clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. For memory, this car does about 59 miles per gallon according to WRTP figures, and uh, it emits 108 grams per kilometre of CO2. So, certainly, to uh, drive it. Um, very smooth and very easy. There's nothing particularly exciting about it. Um, it doesn't roll as much in the corners as I expected it to, actually, given that it's quite high up and it's just based on the current Clio platform. 
like the Arcana and then the Dacia Sandero and Sandero Stepway. Uh, you would have seen the Sandero Stepway on my channel in 2021. Uh, they're based on a slightly sort of simpler version of uh, this platform, but you know, it seems like the majority of Renault's range are actually based around uh, um, this platform, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Seems okay to me. Yeah, it's just very. It's very easy to drive. It's, it does feel nice and high up for those of you who you know, want specifically uh, the higher up driving position. But then again, there's loads of other cars like this in the class. There's things like the Skoda Kamiq, the Seat Arona, the Sanyon Tivoli, the MGZS. There's absolutely loads of cars like this around. And, not all of them, though, do have this option of the hybrid and the plug-in hybrid. Sorry to Yaris Cross, certainly is available as a standard hybrid like this is, um, as opposed to the more common mild hybrids that you can find in things like the Ford Puma. This car I'm driving is a, a full hybrid with um, the, the regen braking, which is really, really good. Let's move that to sun visor there. Yeah, it's all very, uh, it's all very civilized and very, very easy. So, viewers, the Mark II Renault Capture is this a car that you should uh, consider as a reliable everyday transport? Well, let's take a look at some trim levels first. There are quite a few of them for some reason. Don't know why you need so many, but uh, there we go. In addition to the uh, Reeve Ghost Special Edition, which this car is, there's also the Bose Launch Edition, the Normal Launch Edition, the Engineered, the Evolution, the Iconic, the Iconic Edition. I don't know what the difference between the Iconic and Iconic Edition is. Uh, the Limited, the Play, the RS Line, the S Edition, the SE Edition. I don't know what the difference between those two is. The SE Limited and the Techno. I think when this car was launched, it was something like Play, Iconic, and S Edition. I think that was the top model. Since that's changed, I think that one above this would be something like the Techno. So with such competition from things like the Puma and the Kamiq and you know cheaper models as well, like Dacia's Duster, um, is this a car that you should uh, consider? Well, it's it's very old oriented towards comfort, it's very well specified, it feels quite well made, the warranty is, you don't have to have one that is all sort of blacked out like this, you could have a more sudden looking one, but yeah, it should be very economical, I don't see why this, this wouldn't be, uh, you know, a good car to uh, just handle the day-to-day -day vagaries of family life. Anyway, thank you so much indeed once again for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, leave a comment below, and uh, we might see you again soon for more unexpected videos.